When scouting canola diseases pre-swathing, there's a number of diseases you can be looking at. At 60% seed color change is a great time when you're assessing your maturity. Walk into the field, pull up a few plants, and we'll take a look at to see which diseases we got. Easiest way to do it is to look at all structures of, of the plant. Uh, start with the pods, move down to the stem, and eventually get to the root. For pod diseases, typically what we'll see at this time of year are things such as aster yellows and uh, alternaria. Alternaria, what you're looking for to determine whether or not you have this disease is uh, blackened small lesions. They could be just pinpoints or they could be in the shape of uh, footballs. And this is a disease that usually comes in later in the season. It doesn't cause much of a yield loss in Argentine type of canola. Sometimes you'll also notice at this time of year some uh, pods that'll be curled and those will usually be due to uh, insects such as thrips. Another common pod ailment is uh, aster yellows. And this is caused by a, a phytoplasma and it'll cause the, uh, the pods to not form correctly, uh, often forming uh, bladder type structures. So after you've assessed the pods, you work your way down the stem. And what we're looking for now is sclerotinia. And you can see the lesions on here, the plants. This plant here is fairly badly infested. And, and the way to look for sclerotinia is to kind of twist the stem and you'll get shredding and, and decaying of the plant here. And inside a lot of times are little small sclerotia bodies that look like mouse turds. Here's some here. And that's a sure sign of sclerotinia. The, the shredding is quite a giveaway. You won't always find sclerotia bodies inside. Sometimes uh, the disease doesn't get that far along in its life cycle. So you can see this plant was infected below the crotch. So the main, entire main stem and entire plant basically succumbed to the disease. And you can see the yield would be minimal. A, a lot of times you'll get just side branches that will be infected like this one here. And, and you can see the yield loss wouldn't be so significant. So it, when you see infection below the crotch on the main stem, that's when you can expect you know, significant yield loss. I think the rule of thumb is 50% of your infection level. So if 40% of the plants are infected, 20% yield loss, you can see sometimes that's variable depending where the infection takes place. And from there, we work our way further down toward the roots. So as we get further down the stem of the plant, we uh, get right down to the ground level and we're going to be looking for black leg. Um, you won't always see the giant disgusting canker on the outside of the stem. Um, so you'll need a pair of $20 garden shears available at any small town hardware store. And what we want to do is actually snip right at the ground level and look inside the stem for some characteristic blackening. If we're uh, prior to swathing, there's very little that will make um, the inside of the stem black besides black leg. Once we're a couple weeks after swathing, it can be a little bit, uh, a lot, it's a lot more difficult to uh, diagnose black leg. But uh, prior to or immediately at swathing, um, if you're snipping at the ground level and seeing the pith in the stem turning black, um, it's, it's very likely to be black leg. So when we're looking for club root um, prior to swathing, we want to make sure that we remember that symptoms can look a little bit different depending on what stage the club root is at. So you can see with this plant here, we pulled it out of the ground. It's still pretty green up above. So there's a chance that you wouldn't necessarily see any symptoms above ground. But when we pull it out, we can see the characteristic clubs that club root causes. These ones are actually quite firm. Um, and you can see that there's actually some normal roots here as well. So the plant is still getting some some nutrition. Now this plant here also is still pretty green from above but if you look down at the roots after pulling it up out of the ground some of these clubs they're not as firm as the other ones they're actually starting to decay a little bit and um, you have some fresh ones here and some decaying ones so symptoms can look pretty different. This plant here actually died of club root as well um, and we can see how the clubs actually just basically rotted and fell off. So if you were pulling this plant out of the ground as a premature dead plant, it would be tough to say if it was club root or not. Um, once you take a closer look, you can see how there were some galls here that basically uh, rotted and, and fell off. So once again, really important to pull those plants out of the ground and check them really carefully to know what you have. After the crop has been swathed, you can do some disease scouting, but it is certainly a lot more challenging. As the plants uh, dry down and as they mature, and uh, the diseases change the way that they're expressed. So we'll demonstrate a little bit to you how you can uh, identify it at this point. But keep in mind, your, your results are not going to be quite as accurate. 
When it comes to the diseases on the pods of the plant, uh, aster yellows and uh, alternaria, these um, alternaria in particular certainly becomes a lot more common. Uh, once the plant dries down, then alternaria acts as a saprophyte, which is a decomposer and really likes to, to colonize canola. So this uh, plant has some, has some alternaria infecting it. Um, and, and again, it comes in quite late, sometimes earlier in the season, as, as you've seen before, you, you'll see the, the typical uh, pinprick or the uh, football shaped lesions. But now, since there is no immune system left in this plant, it just grows like crazy. And so it'll produce these black and uh, sooty type of lesions all over. And the longer that this sits in the swath, the blacker that this will typically become. Typically for alternaria, it doesn't cause much of a yield loss in Argentine canola. It's um, more of a cosmetic disease, um, but you will see it often more in association with insect damage, such as cabbage seed pod weevil or ligus bug feeding. Um, but where alternaria can become a problem is when it is, uh, when your crop is laying in a swath such, such as uh, this situation. Um, the more alternaria that, that grows on it, it has the opportunity to cause some pod busting open and shattering and causing t potentially some yield loss. Uh, another good time to be out monitoring for black leg, not so much from a uh, from a survey perspective, but just for keeping an eye on what's actually happening on your farm is right at the time of swathing. Um, clearly, we're not at the time of swathing here. We're about a week after, so it gets a little bit more difficult to tell exactly how much black leg is here and what its severity is. Um, other decomposition fungus, saprophytic fungi, can uh, come in and start mimicking some of the black leg, uh, black leg as well. So what I've got here is ten plant that I randomly sampled across the field and we will just snip into them right at ground level. So of the uh, 10 plants that we had randomly collected here uh, and snipped, seven of them are showing some black leg in the stem. Uh, so while this isn't necessarily a catastrophe, we, we definitely will need to introduce some variability to this field. So once we're more than two or three days past, uh, past swathing, and definitely by the time the combine rolls into the field, a lot of these plants have been dead for, for so long that a lot of um, a lot of decomposition will be happening. It becomes extremely difficult to tell uh, exactly what's black leg and exactly what isn't. You could still have some some measure of an idea, but uh, it definitely isn't enough to make a to make a reliable assessment. Okay, after you've swathed, sometimes it's not as easy to identify some diseases. And like Greg mentioned, you know, cutting the stem for for black leg and things like that, it becomes a little more tricky after the crop is swathed. So trying to find sclerotinia in the swath isn't that easy and in standing stubble can be even more difficult because a lot of times the sclerotinia would have come in above where you cut so you wouldn't see it at all and and a, something that gets confused for sclerotinia is gray stem and you can see here this stem is quite gray and bleached looks somewhat similar to the sclerotinia but when you try the twist technique this doesn't shred it just breaks so there's a big difference and inside here is all blackened and and uh, there's still a cortex in there that the sclerotinia didn't take away so make sure you twist it and look for that shredding and look for the sclerotia and you can see here it's just breaking off so there, this wouldn't be sclerotinia this would be gray stem which is often confused So we pulled out some clubroot plants here after the canola was swathed and you can see how it's actually sort of tough to tell if there was indeed clubroot here so what you want to do is you want to feel around and see um, if the roots have sort of a peaty feel and if they're if they're falling apart like this right here was a club root gall and you can sort of squish it and it comes apart but it does get a little bit harder so it's not um, it's not really as easy to scout for it after the plant has had a little time to rot and break down 